and, and, and so let's talk about that because one of the things, and I think you, you helped me discover this and we've taught, we've never met in person, by the way, I and mean, we've talked I know, many, I met many years, but now going back, I guess, since I started tracking this, uh, the, the, the reactions or the rejections of renewables back in 2010. And I think we've probably been chatted maybe since then, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago. Um, yeah. but, but one of the things you pointed to me, uh, pointed out to me was that these recs, these renewable energy certificates or credits that w- there's a wind project in New York that is in Western New York, but it's actually the wind output is being claimed by utilities in Massachusetts. So this is some, th- right. tell me about the bookkeeping here, right? Because there's a, a ledger domain here in terms of these renewables and how they're being accounted for and how, what counts as, as a wreck and how these utilities are complying with this thicket mm-hmm. of regulations. Can you, can you explain how that works? Because I talked to a utility executive recently who said, this is one of the most corrupt parts of the deal. If you're going to have a renewable energy credit, they should have to use the electricity in the area where they're claiming it. And instead she pointed out, well, you know, a wind project in Texas, Amazon is claiming it offsets their electricity use somewhere else. Well, that doesn't wash when you're the grid operator, you know. So anyway, I'll, I'll yeah. stop talking. So how does a rec work? Yeah. Oh, thank you for that question, because this is where this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where people are most confused, including legislators, which which is very frustrating. But the, here is how the, the way the system works is that for every megawatt hour of generation comes out of a power plant that is deemed a renewable, again, according to statute or rule, it produces two components. The first component is the energy itself, the electrons that go on the grid. An electron that comes from a wind project is no different than an electron that comes from a gas plant, a coal plant, a nuclear power plant. We can't tell the difference. Uh, But there is a separate component, an accounting of that electron that gets recorded and that's called the renewable energy credit. That is effectively the environmental benefit associated with a megawatt hour of generation that comes from wind or solar or biomass or hydro, you know, depending on the renewable. And it is that component that is used to track whether or not there's compliance with a renewable portfolio standard. So let me give you an example. Here in the state of New Hampshire, we have a program that supports biomass. And that's our RPS dedicated to biomass, wood-based biomass. And in New Hampshire, we consume about 10 million megawatt hours of electricity as a, as a state. So we're very small relative to the other states. I mean, Massachusetts is upwards of 45 million megawatt hours. Connecticut is, is near there as well. So we're, we're a quarter of the size. Um, but our mandate for biomass is 8%. And that means that 8% hundred thousand megawatt hours or eight hundred thousand renewable energy credits have to be recorded and recognized as being as that generation sold to any any resident any business in New, New Hampshire has to come from that eight percent of it has to come from that biomass technology and so that when you track the renewable energy credits that's in fact that's where the renewability is. Now, we have states like Texas is a perfect example. Well, actually, let me step back from Texas a second because that's a little bit more complex. Well, we'll talk about New York. So in New York, they also had something like a renewable portfolio standard. and But, but it was slightly different in concept. Um, so they had a number of wind projects that were built over the course from, say, 2005 to 2015, and certain some after, but leading up to 2015, their mandates were pretty much met. And what they had were contracts. There was a, a central procurement program where the state was buying those renewable energy credits. And so that, and it, for under 10 year programs. So any wind project that was in operation had a contract with up to the 10 years, they were selling their renewable energy credits to the state and the state of New York could claim that renewability, that wind project was greening up, if you will, the generation that was being sold in New York. Right. But once those contracts were no longer in, in service, they, you know, they, they went their full gambit of 10 years, then those wind projects started selling their generation into New England, taking advantage of or participating in the renewable programs here and eligible 
for our renewable energy credits. So a utility in New Hampshire, a utility in Massachusetts or New Connecticut could buy that energy in those racks and claim them as the uh, as the renewable as meeting their compliance or meeting their mandate in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Mm 